Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer TED.com video, we're going to be analyzing the reasons that both Microsoft and Sony went with the AMD Jaguar, and we're also going to be analyzing how, in reality, there wasn't that much of a choice for them. Now, we have gone into this in a previous video somewhat, but we've got a lot more information now, as tends to happen, and we now know the end result, in other words, the end vision of both consoles. And if you actually look at the consoles, the, the comments that have been made, the, the technical levels of the consoles, in other words, what they're trying to achieve with the performance and so on, you can see that it's a simple case of a process of elimination. So one option, for example, they could have gone with right off the bat was an ARM level processor. Um, and this would have been okay uh, for example, they could have maybe had 16 ARM cores and a whole bunch of power VR graphics cores. This is an exact quote, by the way, from John Carmack. And yes, it would have made a pretty good system. But as John points out, and as is fairly well known in the tech industry, one of the concerns with that is the 64-bit um, addressing of ARM is not ideal right now. And we know from early designs of the Xbox, in other words, the early leaks of the Xbox One, uh, back then known as Durango, that they originally decided, you know what, we need a lot of memory in this console. It's not a nice to have, it's not a we would like it, it's we need it. It's the equivalent of saying, well, okay, we need a case to put this console in. They needed that amount of memory. Why? Simple, because they knew that they wanted to run a lot of applications simultaneously. They knew that the memory footprints, memory footprints I'm sorry, were going to be a hell of a lot larger. They knew that they wanted the console to do more than gaming. And that's why they ended up how they how they are now they they ended up with this um, eight gigabytes of DDR3 because initially their design called for DDR3 memory because they didn't wasn't really confident about the GDDR5 memory uh, unlike Sony who initially were probably going for two to four gigs and then they upped it to eight. Let's just be honest though in rea in reality most likely both companies were testing out they had probably created prototypes, threw together prototypes of various um, architectures and tested them out and said, okay, this doesn't work as well as what we had hoped. This didn't work as what we, well as what we hoped. And, you know, how they sometimes do this is actually literally throwing together pre-made stuff. Like we know, for example, some of the early um, kits for the PS4 were basically PC parts, just, uh, I believe it was AMD bulldozers or something similar. And... The original Xbox, um, at least way back when, in like 2000 or whenever the hell it was released, I can't quite remember, but that was actually made using Dell laptops. They they initially created the initial design for the Xbox One. They took to, they took apart a whole bunch of Dell laptops. This is how the story goes, anyway. And they used those as the basic parts to create this console. And then, and then of course, they evolved the hardware from there. So what they'd do is they'd get the you know, their Frankenstein monsters, and then they test them in various benchmarks. Not necessarily game benchmarks, so they possibly do have some of those as well, but synthetic benchmarks. And if any of you guys are familiar with um, something like 3D Mark or whatever on the PC, you'll be somewhat uh, familiar with what this process is. Basically, you, you make the computer or the uh, hardware run a series of tests, and then you basically categorize how fast it does those tests and then you get an idea of what performs best for the tasks that you need it to. Now there were, there were several prerequisites from both console manufacturers. The other one, uh, aside from of course the 64-bit extensions that we've spoken about, um, was a SOC system on a chip. Now the SOCs have tons of stuff on them. They have the CPU and the GPU obviously but they also have other stuff. They also have the audio on there a lot of the time. They'll have like memory controllers, um, input-output control, and various other bits, also known as I.O., by the way, for input-output. And it, was, it just made sense from multiple standpoints. Um, 
Now, Intel were in contention, no doubt, at one point, and they did have the financial clout to really buy um, a piece of the console pie. And many people were somewhat anticipating an Intel dominated future. They were expecting, okay, well, Intel uh, CPUs for the desktop, Intel CPUs for the consoles. But this didn't turn out to be true. Um, Larrabee, Intel did really push through with it. Larrabee, of course, was their own sock, uh, sort of. And they didn't really push through with it. And so the sock design was pretty important to them for multiple reasons. One of the reasons it was important for Microsoft and Sony was power and heat. We've spoken about that before. We've spoken about just how important it is to have a low power requirement device but actually has lots of power as well, uh, lots of performance power as well it also once you've got the manufacturing process refined it also costs less um, and that's a very important part as well reality of the matter is as well they needed expertise and that's a really important part of it remember how just recently i released a video that was discussing how the PS4 didn't cost anywhere near as much as the PS3 did to develop. And one of the reasons behind that is they, of course, developed the cell processors specifically for this. And one of the reasons that they've actually abandoned the cell, and we'll go into this a lot more in just a moment, was because they wanted the 64-bit, uh, x86 64-bit architecture. We'll go into that in just a moment. But a lot of this comes down to costs. Um... When you went with AMD, AMD basically were happy to work with the console manufacturers, so the story goes, and really put together a division, basically, to help support the designs. And they were able to customize the designs for both manufacturers' requirements. And this is really important because a reliable company who were able to produce things en masse... You know, when we're talking about billions of transistors, we're not talking, you know, a few hundred million or something that ridiculous. We're talking billions on a very small die, um, which ends up being pretty large, but we're talking very small process, but, you know, it's a very complicated device. It needs to be reliable. And yes, you could have gone another company um, to help you do this, but it adds to the cost, adds to complexity, um, and goodness knows what else. And so... You've got to remember that just how important this stuff is, it has to be reliable and neither company wants to be the one that has the red ring of death syndrome. And by all means, of course, the PlayStation had its own fair share of problems as well. Another thing as well that put the nail in the Intel coffin was the graphics. The graphics, of course, are very important for both companies. And so you're left with this really awkward position. You've got effectively NVIDIA, Intel and AMD right in the runnings right now, okay? NVIDIA are somewhat out because their CPU architecture just wasn't really really where they wanted it to be. Now, in NVIDIA's defense, they have said that they could probably have made something, but it just wasn't worth their costs. They've got their own projects, and they didn't feel that the money that they were going to earn from Sony or Microsoft was worth it. I don't know how true that is. It's horses uh, each person is saying one thing and i i think it's kind of 50 50 i think that the video didn't really think um it through properly maybe or maybe they weren't really offered it initially to begin with or maybe they couldn't compete on price whatever it was um it's probably as well one of the primary reasons was because of the sock design theirs was just inferior at the time to amd which is just how it is Similarly, the GPU technology, the compute technology of the GCN cores was pretty much exactly where they needed it to be. Compute had been around for a while on PCs. We know that because, well, the video really pioneered it. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of ironic that AMD got a lot of the compute stuff wrong initially, and then they went more of the NVIDIA route with the SIMD architecture. And so... Intel were also somewhat left out of this as well. Um, and so you're left really with AMD. And a lot of the reasons behind this are very simple to really follow. I mean, think about it. Mark Cerny and all the others have said the same thing. They needed the, the costs of producing software 
both for large firms or for small companies um, to be lower. They needed it to be as low as possible. They needed to make sure that the porting process was as painless as possible and as quick as possible. The unified memory architecture as well. Um, all of this was really pushing towards a fairly simplistic, and I don't mean to say f uh, sound flippant when I say that. I just merely mean to say that they needed a very elegant, very um, streamlined design. And both consoles, if you actually break them down, they're actually pretty complicated inside. I mean, for example, with the PS4's multiple bus system, the onion and the garlic. But in terms of the vision, if you actually, you know, this is a case of all we have to do, you know, it's it's all well and good to say all we have to do is, you know, um, fly to space. It's very easy to say that. In other words, the vision of getting into space is not that difficult. It's the process to actually get there. And this is exactly the same situation as with the the PlayStation. The actual vision that they had was pretty easy to wrap your head around, really, to be honest with you. It wasn't a particularly complicated vision. It was um, that they needed a device that was capable of running the easier the easier the porting process is, the more efficient it is, and the more libraries, the programming libraries, that they have to draw upon. And if you do a quick analysis of this, by the way, you can see that it's all really C++ or extensions of it with, of course, either DirectX 11 or a API in the case of the PlayStation, which is very similar. Um, and they needed that. They needed to be able to really focus on the compute technology, which both companies have really been happy about. And AMD, for example, if you really push it, if you look, if you look at it, they had actually engineered the PlayStation 4's GCN architecture slightly differently. It had a, and AMD were more than happy to facilitate, for example, the ability to add 64 compute commands um, and basically queue those up. Uh, much better level two cache support. Uh, which are very important for compute and the additional 20 gigabyte per second bus as well. All of this stuff is really important to um, Sony's visions of the console. More to the point, AMD stuff, AMD stuff was well, it's basically light years ahead of the ten of the competitors at this point. And that's the thing: six months, twelve months down the line, a console manufacturer could say, "Oh." You know, there's something better on the market, but that's just the nature of technology. Um, at some point, you have to just say, okay, this technology now is at the point we need it to be able to make a better system than what we have by a large magnitude. You just have to jump on that. Effectively speaking, it's to the point now where if you're familiar with game design and you understand the principles of creating games easily on the PC, the engine, generally speaking, will be relatively painless to port to either console, uh, simply because of the cross-platform um, similarities between both systems, between the PC, the Xbox, and the PlayStation. And this is really good news, of course, and it brings together a much more unified uh, future. Some theories, actually, of collusion in terms of you know, both Sony and Microsoft said, okay, well, we're going to go down the X64 route, so, you know, you guys, just to let you guys know, um, was also banded about as well. I'm not necessarily sure if that's the case. In It could just simply be that, look, if I tell you to design, you know, something that rolls, most likely you're going to design a wheel that's very similar to, you know, Bob's idea of a wheel. In other words, sometimes... If you're given a certain set task and you're given a certain budget, you're given a certain um, set of priorities, you're going to come up with very similar hardware. And of course, both systems do have some noticeable differences. It means that games designers can just use a predefined series of libraries if they want to, or they can write their own, and they're familiar with it, and that's very important. Um, I'm actually quite happy how it ended up and of course we do have um, some points of contention and argument banding around the internet right now such as the amount of memory that's being allocated to both systems or uh, uh, the amount of CPU cores that are being allocated towards you know system resources and goodness knows what else but I think overall we have the ability to create a very 
uh, well, it already has been created by a very good gaming platform, a very good gaming base, and I'm actually pretty happy with uh, the specifications of both systems. Of course, you're going to get those who are, you know, comparing it to a high-end PC, which isn't really fair considering how much like um, the PlayStation 4 costs, and you've got to remember some facts i mean that's not the cost of the hardware really you've also got to take into account the development costs that sony have, and microsoft have eaten up and everything else so yeah um it's really a case of circumstances and the other hardware just wasn't quite where they needed it to be um the cell processors that's uh power p uh, p uh power pc i'm sorry architecture just wasn't really the, the direction that either company wanted to go anymore they realized that it's not really conducive to the direction of the development they needed it's not really um that great for multitasking in the same way that the x86-64 is in terms of all the applications they needed to write they wanted multiple cores that were very cheap to produce and easy and accessible as well as being able to easily pile on the compute functionality um, of the GCN or likewise architecture and so all of this stuff just throws together and just you know it's kind of like circumstances anyway it's been a bit of a thought exercise more than anything so I'm hoping you guys have found it somewhat useful I will hopefully see you soon take care bye for now